So this is the second part of our um, chapter three topic on charts. And this is the, the Mac version for those of you who are taking a look at it. So we're gonna do a couple things today. We're gonna take a look at alternative text. We're gonna take a look at spark lines. Then we'll take a look at these different types of charts below the line chart. Uh, we'll take a look at clustered column again, but we'll do combo charts and we'll do also stacked bar charts. So let's first take a look at our alternative text. So if I select a chart and I right click it, I'm going to get this drop down menu and we'll have edit alt text. And it opens up the alt, alt text or alternative text task pane. And this is where we would describe the object and its content to someone who is visually impaired or blind. So we could just put in a description, the column chart, displays the number of jobs in each of the computer job categories. And period. Now, just a little bit of a heads up for your assignments. When you're putting in the alternative text, don't press enter or return because you can see when I press that, it goes to the next line. Um, the system will mark you wrong if you do that. So just come back, put in the period, and then just leave it. You don't have to press enter. And then you would just close it out. It's a little weird because we're so used to pressing enter and you know saying that's an acceptance, but in this case it's not. So again, you would right click your graph, edit alt text, and then you can see it's still there. Okay, so just watch out for that extra line. The system will mark that wrong, okay? So let's close that. Let's take a look at the next option. The option is gonna be for spark lines. So I'm going to increase the zooming here so we can see them a little better. So spark lines are another kind of graph or chart where the actual little teeny tiny graph goes right in the cell that we're putting it in. So say, for example, I want to create some spark line graphs for the number of jobs in 2016 and the estimated ones in 2026. I could highlight my data. So I've highlighted from B6 to C8 and I can go insert insert and here we have a spark line drop down use the drop down let's pick the line for this time and notice how it's populated this is where the data is where do we want to put it now so i want to put it in these three cells okay we have three rows of data so we want three little charts one for each of these sets of data and notice how the um, data range is a relative cell reference, and where we're putting the spark lines are absolute cell references. It's automatically done for us. And we can just go, okay. And we can see we have the little spark lines. Now there's only two data points, so we have just basically a straight line. You'll notice though that as they are selected, it shows you what data it's referring to. And also we have a spark line ribbon comes up. We can edit the data. We can switch from a line to a column or a win loss. We're not taking a look at the win loss though. We're gonna leave it as lines for now. We can put different points on it. We'll just put markers and let's say high point. Okay, and you know, the markers just the beginning and the end. We could come here and use the little down expander to pick a particular type of spark line. So let's maybe pick this, let's pick the one with blue. So this is a dark blue spark line style, dark number four. Remember, they all have different names. OK, so I'm just going to pick that one. I could change the actual color of the line. So maybe I don't want it black. I could come in and here, maybe change it to say this, this dark gold color. OK, so now you can see that the line has changed to a different color. And then I could also change the marker color. So I could say that, well, you know what? I want my, and what will I pick here? Let's pick the high point and let's make the high point red. Okay. And when it closes, you can see now there's the high point is red and my spark line is changed color. Now there's another option with spark lines for the axes. If we click on the axes, 
icon. You can see that it has a general axis, date axis, show axis, plot data right to left. Now, if we click on show axis and go OK, there's really no axis showing here. So, you know, we, we don't need to do that for our particular assignments. So we'll just leave it alone. Um, now, the we don't have a date range for it. So let's take a look at the vertical. So this is where we're going to want to change the option here. We're going to, going to want to have instead of automatic for each spark, spark line. And you'll notice here that, you know, these, this, uh, the computer network architects goes from 162 to 173. But the software developers goes from 1.25 million to 1.55 million. So, but the lines all look the same. So in order to compare those graphs a little more appropriately, we should have the same for all spark lines. So same minimum and same maximum. And when we go OK, now you'll notice that the spark lines, the slope of the lines have changed a little bit because they all have the same minimum and maximum vertical axes. So we can see here that, well, yes, this is the lowest. Uh, these ones here, I should say, are the lowest values, 100,000 to 128. These ones are a little higher, 162 to 173. And then these ones are the highest, 1.2 million to 1.5 million. So it just gives you a better you know, comparison to have those axes the same scale. Let's do the same thing, but this time we'll do actually little charts or little little bars or columns, however you like to refer to it. Now, the first time I did it for the spark lines, I selected the data first. We do have the option where we can select the location first. So I can put, this is where I want my spark lines. I can go insert, spark line, and I'm going to do column ones this time around. That same sort of little dialog box for start spark line comes up. This time around, though, I have the pre-populated where they're going to happen because that's what I had selected. And now it's asking, well, what data do you want for that? And this is where, again, I'll just pick my data. And again, notice relative cell references, absolute cell references. Now we can just go, OK. So we can see now we have little column charts in there. And same type of thing, we have the spark line ribbon comes up. We can, let's maybe, uh, let's go low point. Okay, so we can see that the low point is highlighted. Now it's highlighted in red because we have red spark line style dark number five. Let's maybe change that again. Let's change it to, uh, let's go this pale, no, let's do the red spark line style colorful four. Okay, just to make something different. We can do the same thing, spark line color. Well, let's see what happens if we change this to brown. Okay, so you'll notice that the columns change to brown. Okay, and then if we have this marker color, maybe we want the low points. Let's make the low points a different color and let's make them, excuse me, let's make them purple. So low point and let's choose purple. Okay, so you do have the same sort of options to pick a style or you can do some customizing with the color and the color here. Let's do the same thing for the axes though. Let's come over to axes. And again, we don't usually do anything with the horizontal one, but let's change the vertical one. And let's make the minimum value the same for all spark lines and the maximum value same for all spark lines. And we click OK. And now we can see that the columns have been, you know, altered a little bit as far as where they're lying. So again, let's look at the smallest one. So database administrators are 119 to 133. So that's a bit lower. The computer programmers, 240, 294 to 273. You can see that's a little higher in the cell, a little bit of a thicker bar. And then we have the network admin network system admin people 391 to 415 again a little bit of a higher column and then finally the computer systems analyst people they're the largest number so we have larger columns there okay let's take a look at the sparkline sheet in our workbook and we'll do some more so first off let's increase the zooming so we can see a little better and let's maybe fix the column widths, just to make everything, oops, let's make that a little better so we can read it here. Oh, something's weird with the formatting here, so I'm going to put it over to the right just so we can read a little better. And I'll do the same thing here. <clears throat> All right, 
So let's do the same thing. We'll put in some uh, line spark lines and then we'll do some column ones. So again, this is where I want them to be. Insert spark line. We'll do lines this time. What data are we going to have to look at? Well, we're going to take a look at from January to June for each of the expense categories. And OK. We'll put all the markers in. OK, so you can see that with the default style here, the blue spark line style, dark number five, the markers are in red. So let's leave them there. And let's maybe make a, let's do the high point. OK, so let's go high points. And let's come over here and change that color. So for the high points, let's make it just black. And you can see that the high point has been changed to black. Let's change the vertical axes again then. So here, come on to the vertical side, same for all spark lines minimum, same for all spark lines maximum. And OK. And now you can see that you can maybe compare the spark lines a little better. Let's do the same thing now for the bottom three. Let's pick the data first, just to show again the two ways. Let's insert a spark line based on these data, but let's do columns. And notice again, we're prompted, well, you've picked the data, but where do you want to put it? We'll put it here in these three and go OK. And we'll maybe pick one of the different options here. Let's maybe pick the gold ones and let's put the let's put the high point again now well, actually let's take that away let's go to the low point because the low point will be different spots and let's change that low point color let's make it the red and we can see the low point has come up in red let's come back and do the axes so changing the vertical minimum same for all maximum same for all and okay and again we can see that the columns you know these ones for utilities and unsubsidized rent are smaller values so smaller columns and we have the shelter equipment again smaller now if we wanted to let's see if we can try and change the axis for this ones let's come back here let's go automatic okay and notice how when i did it for one it changed it for all when you create spark lines, if you want to customize them individually, you have to create them individually. If you create them all at the same time, then anytime you try to change something, some you know color or axis, it's going to change it for all of them. Okay, so just just be aware of that. You'll you'll most likely see it happen as you're trying stuff. Let's go back to our data set and let's take a look at just a basic line chart. So again, let's select the line chart and let's see what data was used to create this. So this is the data here. So let's try and do the same thing. I'm gonna back off the zooming just a little bit here so we can see things. So I'm going to uh, highlight all of this with the header and I'm going to go insert and my line chart and pick my line and notice how it actually picked the heading as the title of my chart. So it recognized this was a different format. This is numbers here, this is words here. Now, when we had say, uh, looked at previous lesson, we were able to say, drag these little boxes. This time around, we can't. We could for the data and then reduce the amount of data being collected, but we can't for the title. I'm just gonna delete this for now and we're gonna redo it. This time around, I'm just going to highlight the actual numerical data, insert, and line chart, just a basic one. And again, no notice, no chart title. Now, there is a way around this. Say you said, oh, I really wanted that to be selected. Well, if I drag it up, well, it'll actually automatically bring it in. Okay, I'm just going to undo that for a second. Another way we could do it is go to select data. It will show us where our data is selected. And for here, see we have series one and we can come here and go, well, you know what? This cell E5, that's the name. So see the name and then these the values. And we can just go, okay, and it picks it up. So a couple of different ways 
that we can do this. So I'm just going to repeat that again. I'm going to delete the graph. I'm going to highlight the values. Insert line chart, simple line chart. Move it over here, over here so we can see it. Oh, I did want the title. So, oops, come back to my chart. I did want the title. Pull this up. Excel recognizes it. So that's one way to do it. I'll just undo that. Alternatively, select data. Select your series. Come into the name box. Select the cell that you want for the name box. And then just click on OK. All right. So just a very basic line chart. We could then uh, change the chart type and we're going to stay with lines, but maybe we want markers on it. So now we have the little dots. Maybe we want to add data labels and we'll say data labels right above. OK, so there's the values above. All right. Let's take a look at another one of the sheets. Let's take a look at our line sheet. And again, I'm going to increase the zooming so we can see things a little bit better here. And we'll maybe make that smaller and we can see everything else. OK, so we should be all right for this. So we have a couple of different charts here. We've got a line chart and a stacked line chart. And I'm just going to fix that total one. There we go. So you can see here that the line chart, when I select it, we have the data from B4 all the way to N8 selected. And we have a legend. So these are the different types of medical um, events that are being tracked. And then across the different months. Now we had seen last time in a clustered column chart that when we went to the design tab and we said we could switch row and switch column. So notice when I click that, it switched the medical procedures now to the horizontal category axis, and it put the months in the legend axis. Now for line charts, we really should have some type of numerical scale along the horizontal axis. So let's just switch row and column to bring that back. Now one of the difficulties with a line chart when you do have a legend information associated with it is that it can be very difficult to read these. You know, like what's the trend for the facility? What's the trend for the scheduled appointment? It's difficult to see them all together. So an option you can do is to create a stacked line chart. And for a stacked line chart, if I click on it, notice it's the exact same data that's selected. Okay, but the difference here is that notice the vertical scales. For the line chart, it went from zero to 800 because basically the largest numbers were around 700 or so. But in the stacked line chart, the vertical scale goes from zero to 3000. And what's happening here is that it's stacking the lines. So first off, the lines are nicely separated so we can see the trends maybe a little better. So you can see for this, this one here for the uh, scheduled uh, appointment um, tracking, you know, it's a very sort of even line. You can see for the, let's pick this one up here, for the facilities transfer, it goes up, down, up, and down. Okay, so you can see that a little more clearly than over here. Now, one of the things with a stacked line chart, because it has this increased scale, what it's actually done is that it's taken these values and added them up. So 496 plus 429 plus 477 plus 645. Well, you know, that's why we need this entire scale to see it because that would be uh, 5, 9, we'll say 1900, okay, which is where this first dot, for first data point goes. Now, something that else that you might want to do with a stacked chart, if I select it, and go to chart elements and I take off the primary vertical axis. You know, maybe that's a little better way of looking at it because you don't really need to know what that vertical axis is. You're really comparing these different values. Let's also come here and let's actually know, let's pick the change the chart type and let's go back to line and let's put markers on it. 
So let's pick that one. Let's come off it. And you can see the marks. Now I'm going to move this to a different sheet so we can see it a little better. So now you can see how you know you might prefer this as a line chart stacked line chart versus the other one because it's a little more readable and again you could take the axis or not okay let's come back to our line and let's take a look at our combo chart so let's select the combo chart and we'll notice first off i'm just going to drag this over so we can see it a bit better we notice first off that we have the same B5 to N9, but now we have the total row included. Okay, so we have the clustered column for the different months, for the different scheduled appointments, and then we have the total line. So let's try and do this same thing. Let's actually try to create this chart. So let's select everything that we wanted, insert, and we have the combo charts are here. And we want this one with the line on the secondary axis. So let's pick that. And I'm just going to drag it to the side here. So we, oops, a little too far. There we go, I want them beside each other so that we can see them. And you can see that they're not quite the same, are they? Okay, this one seems to have an extra line. This seems to be a bit of a quirky feature with Excel and combo charts. And the quick way around it is to have your chart selected and come up into the change chart type. And we have the, uh, where is it here? The combo chart, and it's this one here. Hang on a second. Okay, so because we're with Excel for Mac, it doesn't work the same way as it does for a PC. So if we have our chart selected and go to chart design, if we try to go to uh, change chart uh, style uh, or change chart type, it doesn't sort of give us a nice window like it would before. So if we go to column and pick clustered column, well now everything is going into that clustered column and you'll notice that the total now is not a total line. So we can do this and then we can pick that particular column and then go to change chart type and make that a line. And now we have, it's starting to look a little bit like the other one, but the columns are quite a bit smaller. So, and we also don't have this secondary access here. So maybe what we'd like to do is pick this, again, go to chart line, and we're going to have to pick this on a secondary axis. So let's double click it. And we task pane opens up. And let's pick again, let's want the whole series, we don't want part of it. Let's come on, let's get out of there. Let's grab our line. Let's double click it. And oh no, we don't want the data point. We want the whole line. I hate this about Excel. So let's grab the whole line. Let's go to format. Let's go to format pane. And let's pick secondary axis. And now we can see how it's on it. And again, though, we have a bit of a problem here with the bars. This is where, as I said, you know, Excel can sort of drive you nuts. So I would go from scratch, I'd go delete, I would come back to my data, I would highlight all my data that I wanted, I'd go insert, and I'm going to pick just a clustered column chart for right now. I'm going to put it beside over here so we can keep them close to each other so we can see what they look like. Okay, I can notice, okay, so this is going all right. Let's grab that series again. Let's change the chart type. Let's make it a line. So we'll pick a line. We'll grab that series again. We'll go to the 
format tab, format pane, secondary axis. So that one looks okay. And now you can see how restarting it, and if I resize them so that they're almost identical in size, now you can see that the left-hand scale is the same here, and the right-hand scale is the same there. So it's a little bit troublesome, but um, for whatever reason, in the combo chart options, it won't work properly in Excel, or at least I haven't, in, on a Mac, at least I haven't figured out how to do it. So I'm going to do it one more time. I'm going to delete that chart. I'm going to highlight my data, including the total row. I'm going to come up and make a clustered column chart. Oops, I clicked and dragged there, something I didn't want to. I'm going to put it over here so we can compare our charts a little bit better. I recognize that this is not a combo chart. So I pick the, the total, which I want to be a line, grab that series, change the chart type, switch it to a line, and I'll pick just the basic line. Grab that series again, go to my format tab for charts, format pane to open the task manager, the task pane, put it on the secondary axis, close that task pane, and now we can see how the two charts look very, very similar. There are little spaces between these uh, columns here and these ones here, but at least we've got a sort of, sort of the, the generic. Let's maybe try a, a different way of doing it. Let's do the column chart like this. So let's go insert, clustered column chart. Again, I'm going to put that over here so we can see it. So that looks fine. Let's actually see if we can Sorry, we have that selected. Let's extend everything down now. Again, you get the series. If we get rid of that series, okay, the bars are still sort of separate a little bit. So it looks like there's just gonna be some issues around how it looks maybe, you know, not 100%, okay? Uh, it's just, uh, I, I've taken a look at some different things on uh, the internet. And I haven't really found a nice, elegant way to create a combo chart. It just seems that um, Excel for Mac has this limitation. If I try and use the, oops, I went a little too far there. If I try to use the insert and oops, come back, insert and combo chart with line on secondary access, let's, let's try, yeah, let's, Let's do it again, because that's what the instructions say. Um, it gives this other line. And if I do try to do some sort of manual manipulation and say, okay, well, this line looks fine. These bars look fine. But this one here, I want that to be a clustered column chart. And if I bring this over to the clustered column, see how it's putting it in front of it. It's not putting it together. All right. So I think you're going to be sort of a little stuck with how to do that, the combo chart, to you know, do the highlight all of it, make them all columns together, and then separate that one out and see how it works for you. And if anybody uh, who is a Mac user who has um, come up with or found a more elegant uh, solution, please, if you could, share that with the rest of the class, share it with me so I can post it. All right, so those were our line charts. So those are the basic line and the combo. Let's take a look now at a stacked bar. So for the stacked bar, we can see that we have the same data and we're going to be looking at the 2016 and the 2026. So let's come over here. Let's highlight our data. Let's go insert. Let's go to the bar and let's do a stacked bar. Now notice there is a difference. This is a stacked bar and this is a 100% stacked bar. We want this one, not the 100%, just the stacked bar. So we'll pick that. We'll bring it down, control X, wrap it, wanna cut it, 
And let's put it down beside the other graph. So again, we can compare a little bit better. And Command V, Control Paste, and resize it. Okay. So you can see here that we have the uh, the stacked bars are looking okay. Now the scale, we can see here that we just have sort of a, a negative. We have 500,000 to it looks like three, but this is not very good. So let's maybe extend it out so it's read a little bit better. And let's see if we can make this match up so that we have the negative. Now for myself, I don't like when a chart comes up with an automatic negative. So all we would do to change that would be to click on our value axis, double click it to open up our um, format access, the axis options. And we could change the minimum bounds to maybe, let's say minus 500. Okay. And then we can see that on this chart here, the minus 500 is showing in brackets. If I wanted to do the 500,000, let's double click on it again. And let's go to the axis options just to make it match. Let's add the zero and enter. And we have the value again. Now here we have the vertical axis. Again, we could play around with the elements. So add chart elements. So axes, we've got primary, horizontal, and vertical. Axes titles, we've got them. So that's OK. Um, just the idea that we have a stacked bar. Now it's looking a little different here because we have the computer programmers. We have the little bit of a yellow bit underneath it. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Let's delete this chart and let's highlight the jobs in 2026 and let's highlight, let's use the command, we'll do the number of new jobs. There we go. Now let's go insert and let's do a stacked bar. So there we go. Now we're seeing something similar. So just showing you two different types of stacked bar, one with the 2016 and the 2026 beside each other. And now this one, I'm doing it with the 2016 and the number of new jobs. Okay, so now you can see the negative. And this is where I'm saying like, you know, I really don't like to have my axes showing through my category labels. So I would fix my axes up a little bit and I might change this to maybe 100,000 instead of two. See how it works, it's still there. So maybe I don't like it again. So maybe I'll change it to 50,000 return and at least the line is moving to make it a little bit more readable and maybe I'll even change it one more time to make it 5,000 and then it's pushed over a little bit. I do lose a little bit in the um, visibility of my chart though so I'm just going to make it larger so you can see the the negative values here and if we wanted to we could come here add the chart elements data labels and let's put uh, outside end and we have the two. So notice how we have the 24,000 and the 391. Now we're not seeing anything here. So let's, let's maybe put this in a different sheet to make it blow up. Let's go stacked bar and let's see how we can improve things a little bit. Uh, let's maybe change that scale again just to, even though I don't like how it is with the 50,000. Okay, there we can see it a little bit. And we can see here that that's, you know, because I had the, the lower bound, the minimum bound so small, it uh, or not small enough, I guess, uh, it didn't actually show the value. Now here, if I can pick this one, I could drag this and put it towards the top, okay? And you can still see that it would be negative and there's a little leader line to it, okay? So just a, another option, um, you don't do any um, stacked bars with negative values in our assignments, but just trying to show you some different things that we can do.
So to recap, let's get rid of the task pane. What did we cover off? We covered off our spark lines, both the line and the column ones. We covered off line charts, clustered column charts, combo charts. Remember, combo charts are a bit of a pain in, in Excel for Mac, but it just is what it is. And then for stacked bar charts, okay? And looking at different types of stacked bar charts. So you should be in good position now to, to be working on your chapter three work. So please make sure that you're going through all four assessments.